Alright, how do we get across? And where are we going? Is this where I'm going? Is there a shortcut up here? No. Alright, well here's the next terminal. And there is no shortcut up here, so we're gonna have to run all the way back up here. If and when we wanna come back. Alright, well let's go have a chat with all our um, real life buddies. And then go read some emails. Hey dad, I still owe you a punch in the face. Come on, son. We got work to do. I still owe you a punch in the face. Unbelievable. What's up? Your politicians are constantly referencing the Founding Fathers and insisting they must have been in support of one thing or another. I have never seen such a blatant disregard for history. That's just typical political propaganda. It's also dishonest and delusional. How can anyone claim to know what these people wanted based off scraps of paper and wishful thinking? They're looking for intent. What these men envisioned for our country and its future. Idealistic? And unlikely. I don't think most of your presidents and senators and judges care what the founders thought. They just want to know how they can bend old words to achieve modern goals. Who cares if they were deists or theists or wanted a central bank? Why do people need the validation? What should matter is what you, as an individual, believe and why you believe it. What, are we so insecure that we have to find 18th century letters to validate our beliefs. Oh, look, Mum, a dead man agreed with me. Maybe. If you transpose the letters in his shopping list, you can plainly see he was on my side. Jesus, Sean. It's a cynical way to look at it. Doesn't make it less true. Actually, it was cynical. This is not cynical at all. That's exactly what's going on. You don't need... Yeah, you don't need justification from people hundreds of years ago for your own political views. Like, if there's something you think is right, then just do what you think is right. It doesn't really matter what people hundreds of years ago thought. They don't, like... I keep trying to understand they how don't, men like Washington and Jefferson dedicate their lives to the pursuit of liberty and equality, yet have no problem owning slaves. It's hypocritical in the extreme, and your history books make only passing mention of the subject, as if, as if it were of little consequence. They had a war to win country's future to secure. How could they deal with all these issues at the same time? Spoken like a true apologist. We hear it today, too, that matters of civil rights and equality must wait. There are conflicts to settle, economies to salvage. What do any of these things matter if the people are not free and equal? All of them. So Sean suddenly just stopped being an asshole instead of being the uh, philosopher. And yeah, like the Founding Fathers, hundreds of years ago, they had no idea what's going to happen hundreds of years in the future, any more than we know what's going to happen, you know, in, in, two, in 2100 or 2200. So it's not like what they thought makes sense in the world today because so much has changed. Like you have to work with what you understand today. You can't work with what other people understood hundreds of years ago because the past is past and the future is, is different than what they imagined. And what you imagine. I wish there was a way for us to share what we learn from the Animus with others. Imagine being able to accurately answer questions about the past. Or experience lost civilizations. But how would you cite it? We can't just reveal the machine's existence to the world. Why not? Desmond's right. It would be dangerous. And we still haven't found a way to manage the bleeding effect. Maybe when we're done saving the world, we can look into it. Even if we do manage to stave off the apocalypse, it's not like the Templars are simply going to disappear. I suspect our fight will continue long after this latest battle is finished. Oh, look at the time. Why oh, doesn't time fly? Look, I think it's best we get you back in the Animus, hmm? It's been, like, three minutes since we started talking, bro. Nope, we can't punch him still. Where? Oh, there she is. So, what's the latest? Learn anything interesting while you were exploring? They were working on some weird stuff towards the end. Trying to engineer new bodies and store their minds inside computers. 
Failure after failure. It must have been hard for them. I worry about it too. I mean, they say there's something in here that'll help us. But what is it? Why is it locked up if it's exactly what we need? I don't know. Maybe it's dangerous? Maybe they wanted to make sure only you could reach it. That's the other question. What makes me so special? I guess we'll know once we open the door. You have the genes, Desmond. You have the genes and you have the parkour. So only you can open the final vault because they want somebody who, had, who can parkour. And then when you open the final door, Juno will copy her mind into your body because Juno wants to parkour. Obviously, that is what's happening here. Juno just really, really wants to parkour. And they're going to... I mean, all, all these generations, all these ancestors, Altair, Ezio, all this training, all the ego vision, it's only to distill the essence of parkour into your DNA so that Juno can then take over your body and then she can parkour in the real world. That's all this is about. Hey, I hope it's not uncomfortable for me to ask, but what happened with Lucy? I killed her. I don't know. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. No, it's fine. I really don't know. I was talking to my dad about it. It's, it's hard to say. I mean, Juno definitely took control, but I think I agreed to it on some level. I think I let her in. No. <laughs> That's not right. It, it wasn't her. Not exactly. It, it was more like a, a program. Does that sound weird? It, it showed me things. What'd you see? That if I didn't stop Lucy, Abstergo would get the apple and we'd all be dead. I still don't understand why she turned on us. I'm sure she thought she was doing the right thing. What if the apple lied to you? What if the apple only showed you what it needed you to see for you to stab her? So that Abstergo cannot take your parkour away from Juno? I gotta get back to work. You might want to do the same. No, I want to read emails. Don't hide on the corner of that plinth. Use the... He's literally hiding on the computer. Alright. Received missions... Uh, it doesn't say which ones you've read. Leave him alone. Okay, this is the last one. Oh, the, the exclamation marks. I see. All right. Uh, Rebecca Crane, am I the only one who thinks we should buy a few space heaters? <laughs> Maybe a couple of jackets too. It's cold down here. I sort of figured that as we powered the place up, it it like turn on its climate control systems or something. Guess not. Maybe the first civvies like it this way. All I know is I don't. So I'd really like for us to pick up some sort of heating solution the next time we head out, please. Don't you have computers? Like. Just, I don't know, play some games on your computers and then your graphics card will heat up. Uh, Sean Hastings annoying. Abstergo is definitely on to us. Most of the power sources I was tracking are gone. Guess they are rushing to snap them up now that they know what we're up to. We've got the other cells scouting for us, running interference, trying to grab anything they can. It's just hard with our numbers and their resources. William Miles status. Sean's continuing his search for additional power sources. I'm working to coordinate with the other cells, have them doing recon and, and watching for Abstergo. Rebecca's been monitoring your sessions. I'm hoping to duplicate some of the recordings and send them to other cells for further research. Also hoping there's a way to bypass some of these memories, but synchronization seems to dictate you progress in chronological order. Hopefully someday we'll have a way to move through memories more quickly. Would certainly save us a lot of time in situations like this. Uh, hurry, why do you delay? If you did not retrieve the key in time, all the world will perish and you with it. Yet you stop to talk or rest. Rest later. <laughs> when your work is done, if I seem aggressive, if my words feel more imperative than request, is it because I fear that you will not succeed in time and then all of us are doomed? Look, Juno just really, really wants to parkour, alright? Why do you, why are you wasting time? Uh, to this one, Miles, my father was taken away from me by human hands. A war, they called it, for their freedom. 
They were not even meant to exist. You were not meant to exist. We conjured you, a mistake, an error that cost us the world. My father would sing to me as a child soft songs of hope and love. His voice forever stilled when your brutish ancestors took up axe and club, later turned our own works against us. We might have known what was to come and averted it had you not dragged us into war. This is your fault. <laughs> you mad, Juno? You mad? Uh, American politics, you know, it's rather incredible the way your lunatic fringe tries to conjure the spirit of the Founding Fathers to support their various causes, and by incredible I mean hilarious. They hold up slave-owning, sexist homophobes as if that's some sort of ideal to which one should aspire. Oh, and in case you think I added that last bit for fun, as the sexism and slavery Brits are already common knowledge, Sodomy was a criminal offense in every one of the 13 colonies except for Georgia and Thomas Jefferson. Champion of personal liberty that he was, advocated for the castration of homosexuals. Lovely fellows, these founding fathers of yours, and now there's that new bit of madness with people asking for the removal of textbook references to their slave owning. And before you think to turn it back around and rightly point out that their barbarism was inspired by English law, Last I checked, two stupids don't make us smart. I thought the whole point of the revolution was to break free of the old ways, and it certainly doesn't recommend your founders as the sort of persons one should aspire to become, unless you aspire to become a manip manipulative bigot. Lest you think I'm championing some sort of leftist agenda, I'll gladly shame the internet tough guys who celebrate the Treaty of Tripoli as well. Shame on them for thinking it shows anything other than something to something taken straight out of the first greatest guide to international relations. Its intent wasn't to prove America wasn't a Christian nation. They were saying they weren't going to reignite the Crusades. No, that would be delayed for a couple of centuries. Now, I don't believe your founding fathers wanted to establish a theocracy, and they probably did intend for the country to be welcoming of all religions, but this isn't proof of that. Why is Sean going on and on about this stuff? And why is this in the game? Somebody has a chip on his shoulder in the in the development team. Uh, I suppose the point I'm trying to make is that people might want to spend a little less time romanticizing and manipulating the past, and a bit more time focusing on how to improve the future. Let's not say there isn't plenty to be learned from looking back, because there is, it's just that most of these lessons wind up ignored or perverted these days. At best, it's disingenuous and unproductive. At worst, it's rather dangerous. Why did Sean write us a short essay on his political views? Alright, well, let's get out of there. Juno is getting impatient. And we are going back to play video games in the Animus. Ooh, look at that! I found a third power source! Already? It popped up in an earlier search, but I've only just managed to confirm it. It's a trap. Where? There's a museum in Cairo with one on display. I guess Connor will have to wait. No, you stay. We need to find that key, and time is running out. I'll make the trip. What about Cross? Everything's going to be fine. I'll be back soon. He is going to die. Ready when you are, Desmond. Winter approaches. The air is still and sharp with grim expectation. The others sense it too and go about their work with uncommon urgency. I would like to help them, but more pressing matters now demand my attention. The Templars have targeted George Washington directly and will not rest until he is dead. I had hoped to shield him from this knowledge, but Thomas Hickey ended any hope I had of staying silent. And so I have resolved to share everything I know of the Templars and their plots, of who I really am. Achilles finds fault in this, and we argue every day, but there is simply too much now at stake to maintain restraint. Don't do this, Connor! Then what would you propose we do? Sit and watch while the Templars take control? We are sworn to stop them, or have you forgotten? Assassins are meant to be quiet, precise. We do not go announcing conspiracies from the rooftops to all who pass by. 
Who are you to lecture anyone? You locked yourself away in this crumbling heap and gave up on the Brotherhood entirely. Since the day I arrived, you've done nothing but discourage me. And on the rare occasions you've chosen to help, you've done so little, you may as well have done nothing at all. How dare you! Then tell me, on whose watch did the Brotherhood falter? Whose inaction allowed the Templar Order to grow so large that it now controls an entire nation? If I sought to dissuade you, it was because you knew nothing. If I was reluctant to contribute, it was because you were naive. A thousand times you would have died and taken God knows how many with you. Let me tell you something, Kana. Life is not a fairy tale, and there are no happy endings. No. Not when men like you are left in charge. Why is everyone so angry? In your haste to save the world, boy, take care you don't destroy it. Ha! Why are they so angry and why don't they say anything specific? Like, what specifically is it that Achilles is afraid of? He didn't, he didn't actually say, right? He didn't actually say why he wants us to take care or what he wants us to be careful of. Or why he thinks we should take this slowly. He's, 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 they're just saying these vague statements that don't actually specify anything. And I'm, I'm and Connor is angry too. Like why is why is Connor angry? I don't know. Do I want to keep playing? Actually, maybe I should take a break now. We've been through quite a few sequences. Uh, let me quickly look at the DNA tracker. Let's see. Okay, so there's there's four more sequences. We're on nine, and you can see like three more bars after this, but they might be quite short according to these bars. So I don't know, maybe I'll take a break here, spend my own time looking for things in New York, and then when we come back we continue with sequence nine. Should we do that? Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video.